The Rosewood Massacre was an attack on the predominantly African-American town of Rosewood, Florida in 1923 by large groups of white aggressors. This is the 100-year anniversary of the massacre in Rosewood. Our guest is FAMU Law Professor Leroy Purnell, here to discuss the Rosewood Massacre. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Tell us what happened. Well, you, it, uh, some of the origins get a little bit uh, fuzzy, but uh, in essence, there was a claim, uh, purportedly made at first, that a white woman resident uh, had been uh, assaulted by uh, what they thought was a, a, uh, a black chain gang escapee, right now, Hunter. Um, although it's never really truly confirmed uh, that that happened. Mm -hmm. um, as a result of that, uh, mobs of whites uh, decided to go looking for this individual and uh, they assumed that uh, at least two other people were somehow in on it, one of them only because he was driving a wagon. Hmm. Um, and they saw him drive his wagon. He tried to tell them, I don't know anything about who you're looking for. They didn't believe him, so they hung him. Hmm. Uh, they then went on to uh, the uh, uh, residence of Carrier, who was another uh, resident of the, of the community. And there had been issues that Car uh, Carrier had, had raised uh, issues about how the black community uh, was being treated in that area at the time, and so he was viewed as a troublemaker. Uh, and the assumption was made, you must know something about this person, and since we couldn't find the one we want, uh, they surrounded the house, uh, his house. He had gathered his family there because he knew that people were, be were beginning to get worked up, white community beginning to be uh, worked up. And uh, while the house was surrounded, the mob then shot the dog mm. and killed the dog. Uh, when um, I, I believe it was his mother uh, 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 went to the door to try to see uh, uh, what this is all about, they shot and killed her. Uh, and uh, a Carrier then said, I'm going to defend uh, the family in the home, and uh, he had a weapon. And when two, uh, uh, the two white leaders of this mob uh, broke into the house, he shot and killed them. Well, then it was on. Uh, they then burned the house down and decided they were going to burn the entire community down, hmm. killed any black person that they saw walking down the street. So one of them was an old woman walking down the street hmm. who, who knew nothing about it, and it just because she was there, they killed her. Uh, people looking outside the house to find out what's going on, they burn, burn that down. Uh, and uh, most of the, of the families, uh, black families in the area, had fled. They knew trouble was, uh, was brewing, and they mm -hmm. fled into the surrounding woods mm -hmm. uh, to try to escape and hid out there. Uh, they were assisted. There were some uh, individuals in the community, some, some white individuals in the community, mm -hmm. who uh, thought this was wrong, and they tried to assist in, in providing shelter. Uh, although what they were doing, they provided shelter. In one instance, there was a train that came through mm -hmm. uh, and provided shelter for women and children, but said we're not going to provide any shelter for the men because if the mob finds out we're sheltering the men, they'll, they'll kill us too. Uh, so the, the families were separated. People were, were lost their homes. They, they fled their homes with just the clothes on their back uh, and, and leaving all the possessions behind, and, and, and those were the lucky ones. Uh, because you had uh, at least, uh, by, by most accounts, at least 30 people who were murdered that evening. And this went on for several days. Yes, it, it went on for several days until the town had been burned down. They burned down. Uh, this was a, a community of about 300 people, and uh, they burned every home down. And, and those residents never returned and just ended up they abandoning had, and losing the properties. As they a had nothing to return to. The homes were gone. They lost their property. The properties were taken over, were, were, were taken over because they had to go elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they were dispossessed totally. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you, what role would reparations, I know that there was a legislature that compensated these families for, was it $150,000? Yes, this was a very unusual situation in mm -hmm. terms of, well, I, I think it's important mm -hmm. uh, to understand uh, the, the Rosewood Massacre in, in the context that this was just one of a series of massacres mm -hmm. of black communities that had been happening, uh, particularly since the summer of 1919. 
and Rosewood was in many ways the, the end of that particularly violent period. Uh, but in all those massacres, uh, uh, basically the same things happened. Uh, families were, uh, uh, were killed, were driven from their home, properties lost. Uh, this is an unusual, Rosewood's an unusual situation in that uh, once evidence had uh, later on been uncovered, mm -hmm. because the, 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 the tragedy of Rosewood was suppressed for years. Mm -hmm. People did not know in general what had happened. Uh, there was an investigative reporter uh, who ultimately came in and began to figure this out and, and uh, ultimately a decision was made to go to the legislature to get uh, what is in essence a reparations bill as opposed to trying to sue individuals in court. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit uh, uh, more doable in this in instance because you have property, you have property records, you know who owned the property right. at one point. Uh, so there was uh, a bill passed, and it's the only one uh, of all these massacres that occurred. Hmm. Uh, it's the only instance where there's been a legislative action to try to correct uh, uh, the, the harm that was done. And you can never completely right. uh, uh, make up for, the, for the, the harm that was done. But Lost they did provide community. cash payment ultimately to the uh, descendants uh, for the property lost, as well as a scholarship fund that was established. Okay. And do you think that, um, are there, are you aware of any legislative bodies that are looking at this and discussing this as, as maybe a model for other situations? Well, it's been, that's been raised from time mm -hmm. to time whether or not this could be done elsewhere. Uh, of course, in Florida, we have another instance where, where uh, 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 this time it wasn't a, an accusation of, of uh, of, uh, of a white woman being harmed, but we had a, a situation where just because a black man tried to vote, mm -hmm. and that was in Ocoee, yeah. uh, that had happened about two years prior uh, to uh, Rosewood. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, s uh, substantial loss of, of life there, homes taken, person lynched in his own yard. And uh, given what happened with the, with the reparations in Rosewood, there, has, there have been attempts uh, by members in the legislature uh, I know uh, uh, Senator Bracey had worked in it for a long time mm -hmm. uh, to try to have some type of reparations bill for Ocoee as well. Right. Wow. Is there anything you would like to add, Professor Pinnell? Well, uh, I, I would uh, reiterate what I said earlier, that we, we can see this as a pattern mm -hmm. that was happening from 1919 up till 1923, uh, a pattern that was enforced by the fact that uh, you have uh, African American men who had come home from fighting the so-called Great War mm. and wound up uh, in the same type of, of, of uh, racist situation that they, that they uh, left. And these individuals were much more determined to stand uh, and try to protect their property. Mm. Well, that type of confrontation, uh, whether it's uh, not necessarily physical, but whether it's voting or, or however they wanted to express themselves, met with this, this oppos opposition and, and rage. And over the period of time from 1919 to, to, to 1923, uh, the, the loss of life is in the hundreds. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, we have to familiarize ourselves with this and know about it um, and, and, of course, share with others and do what we can. So thank you so much for being a part of the community that keeps us educated about these events. My pleasure. Thank you. In 1993, the Florida legislature commissioned a report on the Rosewood massacre, which formed the basis of a claims bill to compensate victims today. The descendants of Rosewood families have reclaimed their ancestors' stories and are using them to connect past to present. It's important to have factual history on the record in Florida and elsewhere. Mm -hmm.